Now then YouTube, welcome to another video, a video about the GOAT, the MVP, the 5 Series. I've owned this car for two years now, so I thought we'd have a little recap of how things have been. Those of you who watched my videos when I first got this car will know that the first, the first few months of ownership weren't so smooth. I bought this car in February of 2020, right, so just over two years ago. Something else was happening in the world at that time. And just like the other thing, the first few months, yeah, they were pretty rough. Fucking shit. It's definitely nearly there now. We should, we should have filmed the struggle. We've been struggling on this for, well, I've been struggling on this for a long time. That's just coming out there. Oh, it's coming now. It's coming now. It's filming the glory. What are you talking about, Dan? This is completely normal, this, like. You know, this is how you take the... This is how you take them out in a five series now. Did you not know? No, I didn't know that. Come on, baby. Oh. Oh. Uh. Should not have started this. Should not have started this. Should not have started this. This has by far been the worst thing I've ever decided to do. So I had my fair share of trouble with this car in the first few months, but since then, it's been pretty solid. It's done thousands of miles of towing. It pretty much lives on the A1, which is where we're gonna be setting off to shortly. It's been all right. But I thought there might be some other people out there looking for like a, a cheap hack. You know, how could it compare to my Volvo, to my Audi, all that kind of stuff. What's it like at towing? It's only the 525, it's the old school engine. It's not very powerful or anything like that, but can't complain. Now if you remember, I bought this car for one reason and one reason only. My Audi broke and it was local and it had a tow bar. So three reasons. Audi broke, had a tow bar, was local. That's the only reason I ended up with this car and it was only gonna be a stop gap until I either fixed the Audi or got something else. And two years have gone past and it's still here and it still works. Every day fires up, never let me down. I've seen quite a lot of comments on the YouTube suggesting that this might be the most unreliable car I've ever owned and I don't think that's even close to being true. Most of the issues I had with this car, suspension arms, brakes, wear and tear stuff, the only thing specific to an E60 that broke was the iDrive. And when the iDrive went, yeah, that was a bit of a pain in the ass. Oh, I also had the central locking brake as well, which, you know, if you've got a BMW with a boot, then chances are the wiring's gonna mess up at some point. So two specific BMW 5 Series problems there that have caused me a little bit of grief. And they were both electrical, which is, you know, it's an E60, right? Now I've not messed about with anything on this car. I've just kept it working really, serviced it, giving it tires, brakes, filters, whatever, whenever it needs them, you know, tried to maintain it well, but I think I've washed it a total of two times two times. It's not something I take a great amount of pride in, but for a bus to just knock about in, to get all my stuff in, to tow my car around the country, it's done thousands and thousands of miles of just tow work on this. I know it's not a heavy car, but it also took the 330 up to Scotland. The green bastard, that went up to Scotland, no bother on the back of here. So overall, what we're gonna try and ascertain today what we're going to try and work out is, is the E61 a good car? I think it is. How does it compare against the Volvo and the Audis? Well, the Volvo, the Audi A4, the Audi A6, the other three great, let's say, good cars, great good cars, they all let me down at some point or other. Some of them multiple times. Each one of those cars, at some point in its life, didn't allow me to get to my destination, which is something that this car has never done. It's not perfect by any means. I've spent a lot of time, a couple of months, you know, I've spent a couple of months without a radio or any HVAC or anything like that working in the car, but still started up and took me where I wanted to go. It's not the best on fuel by any means. It's a lot better than the Volvo, obviously. I'm getting old, I don't drive like a dick anymore. Most of the time, just cruising about, and it's a really good car to do that, it's a good car, it's a really good car. 
Anyway, nice intro, let's get on the road. So today we are going to actually be fixing the car, we're going to be doing some... Uh, they're just E60 noises. Uh, the parking sensors have stopped working, which it's, well, it's the rear parking sensors have uh, stopped working, but because I've got the tow bar at the back, you know, I've got a mechanical parking sensor there at all times anyway, so, you know, it's not too much of a problem. Other than that, I'm enjoying the car. We've got to fix it today, as I say. I'm just going to change those rear brake hoses and maybe talk a little bit more about it, but overall, it's been good. Now, I have just thought of something that we can discuss, the auto box. You know, if anything does kill this car off, it'll probably be an automatic gearbox. Now, I thought about changing the oil, but it's not a traditional automatic gearbox. It's a ZH, ZF, it's a ZF HP sauce, 57 flavors, uh, what is it? Six HP. I don't know. It's a it's a ZF six speed, right? Put them in loads of cars. The same gearbox and everything were used in you know tons of stuff, and it's fancy. But for me, it's been fine. It groans a bit when I'm towing, which has made me think maybe I need to change that gearbox oil. But. I haven't done that gearbox oil. Now, you can get a service kit for about 150 quid or something with the right oil and you have to replace the sump and all that, but from what I read on the internet, the only thing that's gonna fail is some seals inside the box. Long story short, I've not changed the gearbox oil. We're on 164,000 miles, right? And I don't know what this van's doing either, so let's just, you know. Trying to use cruise control on a motorway. I'm at 70 on cruise, right? I've been trying to find the most peaceful way to drive on the motorway. I do a lot of motorway driving. I've been trying to find the most peaceful way of driving on the motorway. And I think it is 70 on cruise. You know, it seems to be the most common speed that people will do, they'll do 70. but. People can't maintain speed, can they, when they're going up hills and all that? And I know not everyone's got cruise control because they've not got a posh 17-year-old 2,000-pound BMW 5 Series. But it's so annoying the way that people cannot maintain speed on a motorway. But yeah, gearbox seems all right, other than the odd groan when it's towing. Right, we're gonna go on the ramp. You're gonna stay there because there's another dog here, and you've already had a go at him, haven't you? Naughty. Why did you do that? Would you like to explain yourself to the internet? That dog's twice the size of you. Why did you try and snaffle his neck? Hey, you're giving a bad reputation to all the other old staffies, yeah? You're meant to be a senior. Yeah, don't we get in huff on? Anyway, one of the pain in the ass things about this car is because it's got that fancy automatic gearbox. Um, unless I put it in park, I can't take the key out, but I don't want it in park, I want it in neutral so I can roll it to get it on the ramp right, yeah? So what do I do? Do I roll it in the right place and then put it in park? Well, if I do that, when I lower it back down, it's going to bind up in it, you know? It's going to want to roll forward, but it can't because it's in park. Hmm, I don't know why you can't take it out, the key. Well, I can take it out because the, you know, it's a bit broken and I can just yank it out, but... Then it goes, your key's not in, mate. Now, what are you doing, mate? Fuck, you took your key out for? But... Got a little box with some bits in it. I know, doors open. Oh. <laughs> so I got a little box of tricks, right? I got some plugs for MR2 and some ionized water for that. I haven't got the coolant yet, but don't worry about it. Hoses. Pagged for pagged brakes. Germany, one stuck piece, yeah? Both sides, on the rear. Hopefully this is not gonna be a pain in the ass. The main problem is gonna be the side that goes onto the hard line, of course, but hopefully it's not too bad. 
And I just realised I can't actually turn the ignition off if I just press the start stop button. But still thinks the key's in. Well, the key still is in. Just a bit weird, isn't it? Modern cars. These 17 year old modern cars. Who would have them? Well, I've got them soaking in uh, penetrating fluid. Can't quite get the line spanner on just yet. It's an 11 mil, but I've been scrubbing away at it. It's trying to get away the, the corrosion that's on top, but the 11 won't quite go on yet. Bloody rusty fittings, eh? Well, you could have guessed it. And yes, it has been stressful. It's been one of those, just get the uh, mole grips out days. But I've just, just got it freed off. Everything's a bit seized at the top with the nut and the hose. So I'm not sure how we're going to get it back on securely, but yeah, it's loose now. Christ, I was getting close to crying, you know. <laughs> and this is only one side, I've still got the other side to do. Got an advisory on the MOT for these bushes as well at the front of the trailer arm. Yeah, they don't look too clever. Both sides. <laughs> the rest of the car's pretty clean, really. Not too bad. God dirty that is. Ugh. Get this cleaned up and get, hopefully this one comes off. I'm, I'm betting on this coming off quite easy on the caliper side, but yet to be seen. Right, I cannot get this to free up this nut hard onto this line. Now, how am I gonna get around it then? Because I can't untwist this, can I? You know, and I can't try and twist the line on and send it. Well, I can take the caliper off, so. I'm gonna do that. Take the caliper off, unwind it, and then unwind that, and then wind the new one in. Get it tight there, and then you know get the caliper in the right orientation, get it tight, and put it on. I think that's the only way I'm gonna be able to do this without changing that fitting and redoing some brake lines, which I don't want to do. So, see how that goes. I was hoping this would just twiddle off. <laughs> There we go. So twiddle that off. Yeah. So I can't twist that nut, it's seized in at the top. So that's off, right? Can you see? Oof. That's lovely that. Good done it. Mm. Have you done this before? No. Oh, you haven't lived. Fucking mint. Have you done the other side yet? No. It's, ah, this gee. Is the first side. Jesus. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, that's both sides done. Unfortunately, I had to employ the same method. You see, the lines aren't too bad, to be honest. And now I'm just going to put some fluid in, which is another kind of weakness of this car. You have to take all of these trays out, clip that off, unbolt that. You know, they've tried to make it easy because things just slide out and you only really need one spanner slash socket, but all this is covered normally, the Blake Fluid Reservoir. So, yeah, a little bit of pain in the ass, but I'm gonna bleed it. Bought another one of these cheap kits. I've shown you them before, they're the cheap little vacuum bleeders. Bought another because I lost all the hoses. <laughs> but hopefully I can just suck some fluid in. Are you getting on in there? Yeah? Just chilling? All right, won't be long. The vacuum bleeder's working. <laughs> but we had to, um, his bleed nipple's being a bitch. But again, the Milwaukee saved the day. How come it doesn't just round it off? Because it's impacting it, Edwards. Right, square on. So I was twisting it with the ratchet and it was gonna snap because it's twisting it, whereas that just, Gives you a little knock. It's good shit. These vacuum bleeders are real good, but you never really know if there's any air coming out because they always leak a little bit. Can you see the bleeding nipple? Look how crusty and mingy it is, yeah? Obviously this is a low torque one. And you've not touched this yet? This not, no, no, fresh. Just back and forward a few times. Yeah. A few more times. There you go. Done. 
it's not, it's not stripped it, it's just... No. It's just using the impact to tickle it off rather than snapping it. What a method, eh? Mm. Whoa. Good these kits, tenner on eBay. Although it doesn't feel very good at the minute, I'll be honest. It's holding it's pressure. Fluid, right? Yeah, it's holding pressure. It's probably because it's sucking air. Once it gets to being fluid, it'll be a lot better. There's method to the magnets. Right, we're looking good. Just tested the brakes, pedal feels strong. No leaks. Hopefully they flex in a nice way. The wheel sticks out like here on the 5 Series. I'll show you when I put the wheel on. Miles away. All right, that hose is miles away from the tire. So that's the 5 Series then all fixed now. A few more little jobs to do in the future. Got some brake pipes and some, uh, the front brake pipes which aren't too bad. And those rear bushes, which I don't think will be too bad either. But yeah, that's the car, still going strong. So yeah, recommended. But be prepared to fix it, it's a BMW after all. Haven't had that many electrical problems with it compared to what they can be like. Hey. They can be really bad, some of these. It's an early one as well, you know, it's, in, well, it's late 2005, so it's not as early as early, but it's not an LCI, but LCI fixed a lot of problems, so probably get an LCI one if I were you, but I've had none of the real problems with it, just general maintenance, it's been all right. That's it from today then, thank the Patreons. Hope you enjoyed watching. Hopefully the car will be good for another couple more years.